A few rare pickup trucks catch our eye for their charm, tough build, and unmistakable presence. Nonetheless, a few classic pickups stick out. Obtaining some of these trucks, though, might not be simple. They are much more sought after due to their rarity. However, some special pickup trucks are not just rare. They have virtually vanished from the pages of history. Thus, these are a few of the rarest pickup trucks that 99% of people don't know about them. The Dodge Dakota Sport Convertible, conceived by Bruce Benedict to tap into California's convertible pickup trend, offered a blend of utility and leisure. Despite its pickup truck limitations, it embraced open-air freedom, making it a standout. Manufactured at ASC, American Sunroof Company, in Michigan, it featured a chopped roof, padded roll bar, and convertible vinyl top. Available in black, white, or red, it boasted a 3.9-liter V6 engine with 125 horsepower and transmission options of 5-speed manual or 4-speed automatic. Despite its unique appeal, only 2,000 were produced from 1989 to 1991, marking it as a niche product. Nevertheless, its legacy endures as a memorable footnote in pickup truck history. The Mazda Rotary Pickup, Repu, introduced exclusively in the U.S. and Canada in 1974, stood as the world's only rotary-powered pickup truck. Utilizing Mazda's pioneering 1.3-liter 13B rotary engine, it epitomized Mazda's commitment to innovation. Mazda's journey with rotary engines began with the Cosmo Sport in 1967, showcasing the engine's advantages of being smaller, lighter, quieter, and offering a superior power-to-weight ratio. Amidst industry pressures, Mazda embraced the rotary engine to set itself apart, overcoming technical hurdles like inner surface scratching with a graphite aluminum alloy seal spearheaded by engineers like Kenichi Yamamoto. This resolve led to significant sales success in the 1970s. The Repu, although facing challenges due to the rotary engine's torque limitations, aimed for a sporty demeanor. Despite this ambition, production ceased after four years, marking a brief but notable chapter in automotive history. Introduced in 1975, the Chevrolet Big Ten emerged as a distinctive offering in the pickup truck segment. Marketed as a heavy-duty two-wheel drive half-ton model, positioned to provide enhanced load-carrying capacity compared to the standard C10 half-tons, its standout feature was the absence of the newly mandated catalytic converter, offering buyers a notable advantage during the converter's early adoption period in 1975. This exemption was crucial due to Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, regulations requiring compliance with strict emission standards for trucks under 6,000 pounds. The Big Ten circumvented these regulations. Equipped with heavy-duty components like power brakes, robust springs, larger tires, and the 305 V8 engine, it aimed to exceed the 6,000 pounds gross vehicle weight rating threshold. Popular among consumers seeking both heavy-duty performance and the cost benefits of leaded gasoline, the Big Ten enjoyed significant popularity until its discontinuation after the 1980 model year. The International Scout SS2, also known as Harvester Super Scout II, produced from 1977 to 1979, offered a stripped-down off-road iteration of the standard Scout II, lightened with removable fabric doors, a fabric roof, plastic inserts, and a roll bar. It targeted off-road racing enthusiasts. The soft-top Safari 2 variant catered to hardcore off-road aficionados, featuring updated suspension, wing mirrors, and removable plastic inserts mimicking doors. Positioned as a direct competitor to the Jeep CJ5, it boasted durability for rugged terrain. Rarely encountered in the market, the SS2 exemplified limited production and was intended for rugged off-road challenges, standing in contrast to its underappreciated status as an off-road classic. Despite its unique features and rarity, the SS2 remains overshadowed in the off-road vehicle sphere, despite its capability and distinctiveness within the niche. The 1977 to 1981 Dodge Macho Power Wagon emerged as a standout variant of the W150 4x4 pickup renowned for its unique style and off-road prowess. As part of Dodge's 70s lineup, it aimed to capture attention and boost sales during the late 70s era of disco and popular TV shows. 
adorned with distinctive features like a factory roll bar, special off-road tires, and vibrant paint options accented by glossy black stripes, it commanded attention on and off the road. Sporting bold decals and robust aesthetics, it was powered by a potent inline six-cylinder engine delivering 110 horsepower. While the Macho Power Wagon faded with Dodge's rebranding in 1982, its legacy endures with a resurgence of interest in modern times, showcasing its enduring appeal and significance in automotive history. The 1970 Dodge D100 The Dude was a distinctive trim package introduced to the Dodge pickup truck lineup in 1969, exclusively available on long wheelbase swept side models. It featured unique cosmetic enhancements, including black or white body side C stripe decals, Dodge Dude decals on the rear box, tail lamp bezel trim, and special dog dish hub caps with trim rings. With its standout appearance, the Dude garnered attention during its production span of two model years, from 1970 to 1971, with only around 2,000 units manufactured, contributing to its rarity today. Although attempts were made to revive the Dude concept with a Durango-based prototype three decades later, it never progressed to production. Despite its brief production run, the 1970 Dodge D100 The Dude remains a sought-after and highly collectible trim package among automotive enthusiasts. The 1979 GMC Amarillo GT epitomizes GMC's commitment to offering unique and upscale pickup truck options. As part of GMC's strategy to cater to various market segments, the Amarillo GT stood out with its distinctive features and design. Building upon the base Amarillo model, it boasted larger LR70 radials, finned wheels, and chromed side pipes, alongside a color-matching front air dam and roofline spoiler for a sporty aesthetic. Inside, upgrades included softer upholstery, enhanced trim, and added comfort features like a headliner, carpet, and trucker's lounge seat. This special edition was a highlight of GMC's third-generation C and K trucks, which maintained production for 14 years without major redesigns. Alongside other special edition trucks of its time, the 1979 Amarillo GT represents a fascinating chapter in automotive history, showcasing manufacturers' ingenuity and dedication to appealing to diverse consumer preferences. Enthusiasts transformed the beloved Volvo 240 into a pickup truck by modifying its interior and creating a truncated cabin. Retaining the safety, affordability, and simplicity of the original series, the pickup conversion added a unique twist to this cult favorite. Despite alterations, the vehicle maintained standard features up to the B-pillar, showcasing a blend of practicality and creativity. The Volvo 240 pickup represents a new dimension to the legacy of the 240 series, cherished both in its stock form and when modified by enthusiasts.